and the course. Crazy, huge, important, critical tip of the day. I almost wore my... Tip of the day, moving, moving the suitcase oh, downstairs. So if you can avoid hopping on an airplane after a race that is beyond the half marathon distance, I would, I would recommend that. You just cramp up. And I had a window seat last night, and so you just uh, you get a little tight. So my legs are... We are feeling it today. Actually, here is today's run. Woo, a good old bopper, everybody. 9.30 a mile. You got to love it. But it does mean I need to really take care of myself today because the training is not done. Even though da -da -da, the taper is on, everybody. Three weeks to go. Actually, 20 days, less than three weeks. So it's time to uh, taper down. I actually just went live and broke down the race in full, in detail. Thank you for tuning in if you were there live. And actually, before I forget, in the live stream, it did come up about the group run in New York City. Going to go down Friday morning in Central Park. Okay, I will post the official details for the location and the time uh, here soon. I'll create a group, uh, an event on the Strava group, but Friday morning in Central Park. The reason I'm not going to do it Saturday, the day before the race, is I'm just going to be resting in the hotel, sitting there, not moving around, or complete rest. Oh man, especially for a peak race. So it's just so, so key to be totally as fresh as possible, especially for a marathon distance versus a half marathon. Um, so that's what we'll do Friday morning. So I think that would be the 5th of November. Okay. Oh man, this, oh, this feels great. Ugh. Okay, let's break down the Detroit Half Marathon, talk about splits, heart rate, cadence, course, all that good stuff, nutrition, gear. But first, I gotta roll out. <sighs> I was gonna stand, but I think I'll sit, everyone. Rest those legs, oh man, time to taper, like I keep saying, so excited. Let's break it down. Detroit Free Press Marathon and Half Marathon, and I got the massage gun here because I don't know about you, I get more, I get more sore doing road races versus trail races or even mountain races like Pikes Peak. I am sore after a race like Pikes Peak, but man, Something about running fast on the pavement that just makes me sore. So anyway, be using that a lot today. Okay, here is the deal. There's the bib number. All right, shout out to the race organizers. I think a great race. I would strongly recommend it. Um, it was sad because this year we didn't get to run into Canada. Usually that race goes into Canada over a bridge and then I think you come back maybe through a tunnel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but that would be pretty cool. So uh, I love how this... Uh, this metal, especially up here on the, uh, uh, the ribbon part, has the Canadian maple leaf and then a, a star for, for the United States. So anyway, just to our neighbors up, up north, a shout out to all of you. But who knows, maybe someday I'll go back and do it. Uh, there's just so many races, uh, so little time as the saying goes. Okay, here we, here's the deal. Let's break it down. Let me move this over here, talk about the course first, um, the weather solid i would a temperature is it was a little chilly but it's just pretty much perfect a little breezy as well but really i only noticed the breeze actually at the very end it felt like the breeze was coming through the city like being channeled you know when you're sometimes in these big buildings the the wind can kind of create like a little bit of a tunnel through the uh through the big city building so i really only noticed it like I, I would say like the last mile just a slight breeze you know five miles per hour nothing crazy and the course crazy huge important critical tip of the day i almost wore my sunglasses <laughs> when you are preparing for a race 
and you look at the weather. Here's, a, here's the tip of the day. You also want to look when is the sun going to rise? Everybody, I, I've never done that before. When is the sun going to rise? I didn't know. You know, I guess the times have not fallen back yet for autumn. The sun didn't come up until about 9K into the race, meaning we were running through these dark side Detroit streets, I would say for 40% of the race, roughly. And I just say like potholes, speed bumps, turning sharp on corners. And yes, there were a lot of 90 degree turns. If you're looking to PR in any road race, you want to limit the amount of sharp corners, okay? You slow down on, sh on corners, you really do. You have, to, you have to change your cadence just a little bit. So the more long straightaways you have on a course, the better for speed. But my, I'll just say, mistake was that I didn't know when the sun was, so I actually opted not to bring my sunglasses, and I'm so glad because most of the race was in the dark. But I had, like, we went under a bridge at one point, and there was no light under this bridge. And I was like, I mean, I really had to focus my eyes and let my eyes adjust for a second to make sure I didn't step, because I don't want to roll an ankle three weeks before the New York City Marathon. So don't, don't just check the weather. Check when is the sun going to rise. I know it's like a crazy small detail, but it really, um, I don't think it slowed me down that much. But it definitely didn't help. I'll just put it that way. So anyway, that was a, that was something I learned. Um, I still don't know what the vertical gain was. My watch, I think, said over 200 feet. I don't think it was over 200 feet. I think I saw some other runners who had it right around 100 feet based on their Strava data. It is what it is. Okay, um, so that's the course. And overall, it was a good course. Um, and thank you to all everybody working the aid stations. If you see this, thank you for being out there and cheering. For the splits, I believe I was 1601 uh, for the 5K, 3218 for the 10K, and then 4838 for the 15K. All right, fastest split for the mile was 508. Uh, slowest was a red right about 522. Okay, my average for the race was 515. All right, that is the pace I want to run in New York City, 515 a mile, okay? That's the goal pace, for goal race pace for the 2021 New York City Marathon is 515 a mile. Now, I was able to do that on tired legs. Oh, hold on. So as far as heart rate, and again, you know me, like I'm not, I don't run or train on heart rates, but for those that are interested, uh, started out at 128 and then 155, 161, 164. This is all just through the Koros watch. I wasn't wearing a heart rate strap, so take it all with a grain of salt. Uh, peaked out at about 165, which I said in the live stream today, that's a good sign, okay? The fitness is there. The aerobic base is there, uh, but the legs were not there, all right? So my goal was to run around 108. So I ended up, I should mention, uh, sixth place overall, sixth, and then uh, 109.36 was my final time in Detroit. 109.36, okay. I thought I could run around 108 on a, on a solid day. Um, a great day, I would say I would run about the same time I ran in Toledo. But again, Toledo was a peak race, okay. This is not a peak race. So I was going into the race again with slightly tired legs, if not very tired legs. Um, so I feel pretty good about the 109.36, I really do. And at 13K, yesterday in Detroit, my legs were starting to bark, meaning that I could feel the training in my legs. So the last, uh, what is it, last 8K of the race, I had to really focus, I had to focus on my form, and let's just take it, okay? Let's go for it here. 509, 508, 511, 508, 516, 516, 514, 513, 519, 522, 522, 519, 510, okay? For the basic mile splits. And my cadence, again, this is just through the watch. This seems a little high, actually. I don't, I don't, th I think this is a little high, but the cadence from the watch, you know, I didn't have a foot pod on, you know, be it as it may, but it's saying anywhere between 194 and 198. But again, I think that's a little high, just so you are aware. What else as far as splits? 
heart rate, um, cadence. What else was I going to mention? Well, what is the lesson from the race? It's time to taper, time to taper big, okay? And just like after the tune-up race in Wyoming, I, I, you know, I felt decent in Wyoming, but not amazing. Uh, you know, Tyler beat me in Wyoming. I took second place. And I think two or three days later, I made a vlog about uh, the struggle that I'm going through right now in the sense that, whoo, tired, need to taper. And sure enough, I took a hard taper after Wyoming leading into the Pikes Peak Marathon. Boom, it's time to take a hard taper into New York. And especially, you know, that 10 to 12 days, I've really narrowed it down, it's amazing. You might wanna just take note of this and maybe put it into your training. I have found, so my taper is 21 days, but the really hard taper, 10 to 12 days. So New York City is on November 7th, so here it is on your screen, whatever day that is, it would be October something, October 25th-ish. So pretty soon, or 26th or 27th, that is the start of the hard tape. What do I mean by the hard taper? Extra sleep, extra short runs, extra foam rolling, extra micronutrients, extra, you know, just getting those good electrolytes inside of you, all these little extra things, extra massage gun, whatever it takes to make your legs as happy as possible. That's the lesson I'm drawing from Detroit, is that the aerobic fitness is there. Um, even I'm gonna say like the turnover, not too shabby, but like I felt like I could turn over decent, but I didn't have that pop, ooh, the pop, that I also, again, talked about after Wyoming. Um, okay, let me just pause, pause, pause. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. <laughs> I think last but not least that I, man, if I ever get a tattoo, which I won't, I just, I'm not into tattoos, but if I ever did get one, or me, <laughs> there's a running list actually of uh, sayings or quips that I use that somebody, somebody out there is, has a list of uh, potential tattoos that I would ever get, if I ever were to get one. Anyway, one of them might have to be, trust the taper, okay? Trust the taper. Right now, it's like, I, I'm fine with what happened in Detroit, um, but it's like, just trust the, trust your taper. And I know some runners that don't taper and that just, I don't know how, I don't know how they do that. If you are one of those runners, kudos to you. I have to taper. I think especially the volume I'm coming off of. So just trust the taper, trust, trust, trust the taper. It's gonna be great in New York City. Again, can't wait to meet all of you in Central Park on Friday and then on race day as well. Christian, you get the comment of the day. He says, on every race day for Seth, like, this is amazing, Christian. You're amazing. On every race day for Seth uh, that he has a race, I always try and run a similar distance in solidarity and celebration. Uh, it's a fun way to keep my training on point and makes me feel like I'm in the race, too. 20K yesterday in a very windy Toronto. Speaking of just north of the United States, uh, up, you know, up above the border, shout out to all the folks running the Toronto Marathon yesterday, too. I didn't realize that was yesterday. Was that the lakefront one? Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, Christian, you get the comment of the day. And the question of the day. Um, based on training blocks in the past... How has your tune-up race impacted a pivot that you have to make in your taper? Does that make sense? There it is on your screen, okay? I'll probably put it in different words once I put it on the screen, but how has your taper pivoted in the past based on your tune-up race? Kind of a specific question, so you might have to hit pause, think about it, and there you have it, all right? Onward and upward, thanks for tuning in. Kind of a simple vlog here in the basement in the uh, studio. Well, I guess I'm not in the studio. It's just behind me. 1.5. Oh, man. All right. Rest up, everybody. Time to get ready for New York. All right. We will toss it to, of course, yesterday's race in case you missed it. Pretty epic vlog. And shout out to everybody who said hello. Miles, especially. Thanks for saying hi, Miles. And Chris and everyone. Oh, so good. All right. See you, beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.